Today we're going to look at graphs and figure out what the domain is. Remember the domain is all of the possible inputs of a graph. So we're determining the domain, domain of a function graphically. So if you're taking a look at this graph, how would you figure out what the domain is? And remember domain is all of the possible x values, so keep that in mind. We're going to hop right into the first example to determine the domain of the following function. And we're going to be using the straight edge here to figure that out. I'm going to move it out of the way for now. So what is the domain of this particular function? So first thing we're going to do is place a straight edge parallel to the f of x axis and to the left of the graph, just like when we did the vertical line test for functionality. So I'm going to take this straight edge, see if I can pick it up, put it just to the left of the graph. Next, we're going to scan the straight edge from left to right, just like when we did the vertical line test. Okay, so basically just like that, right? Now, we're going to talk about what we do with that. The next step, record the x values where the straight edge intersects the graph. So, let me kind of hone in on keyword here. Where it intersects the graph. We're going to record those x values where it intersects. So we're we're in in this case we're not worried so much about does it touch twice. It shouldn't because it's a function. As much as we're worried about where does that straight edge intersect the graph. Which what are those x values? So for example, right here, you know the graph is well let's, let's try right here. The graph is touching right, but what's the x value where it's touching? Well, all I have to do is look down at the x-axis. It's touching right there at negative 4, right? It's touching at negative 3.5, it's touching at negative 3. In, fa in fact, it's touching, you know, I, they don't actually have arrows on the graph. I'm going to go ahead and draw it. There's an arrow going there, so it goes on forever. And there's an arrow going there, which means it goes on forever. So technically, even if we were to, you know, start way over here to the left off of the screen, it's still going to be touching over there. It's going to be touching all the way at negative infinity because the graph goes on forever. If we scan to the right, going to be touching on the way to infinity because that graph goes on forever because of the arrow. So let's start all, Let's start at the left and we know it's touching at negative infinity, right? So let's scan, still touching, still touching, still touching. So we started at negative infinity, still touching. Where does it stop touching? It stops at zero, right? So it starts all the way at negative infinity and touches the graph, it touches all of these x values all the way until zero, in which case it does not touch. How do we write that? Well, let's just look at this one component at a time. But the way that we write that is parenthesis negative infinity comma zero. And we're going to put a parenthesis around zero because it doesn't touch at zero. We're going to learn later that you put a bracket around the number if it touches at that number. But because it doesn't touch at zero, we're going to put a parenthesis. Okay? And so this is your starting x value where it starts to touch, which in this case is a negative infinity because of the arrow. And then you put a comma, and then you put where it stops touching, which in this case, a comma, zero, and it doesn't touch at zero. Now if we keep scanning, and again it says to scan from left to right, it starts touching again right after zero. Now again, the reason this is not touching at zero is because those are two holes. They're not solid points, so it does not touch. So it's going to start touching anywhere after zero, okay? And if you want to, you can go ahead and note that, right? Anything after zero, it's going to start touching, but not at zero. So you'll put an open parenthesis, zero, comma, and then the reality is that the line's going to touch. Now here's the thing, okay? When you get to two, it's still going to be touching. So there's no point in stopping. It doesn't stop touching ever, okay? This line will always touch this graph, no matter how far to the right you scan, because the graph keeps going down and to the right. So the way you write that is it starts at zero and it goes all the way to infinity. You always put parentheses around infinity and negative infinity. Now there is another way of explaining the domain. <laughs> Notice that the only place where the graph doesn't touch is at x equals zero. This line will touch everywhere else on the graph. So another way of explaining this is just to say x does not equal zero. In other words, if x does not equal zero, the line will touch, and that would tell you the, what the domain is. Okay? You can't put x equals zero, because that's not part of the domain. So you have to put x is not equal to zero, 
which represents every number other than zero. So there's two different ways to write this. This is called interval notation up here, and this is an inequality. Let's review interval notation. Okay, Print, uh, Brackets means includes the number next to it, and parentheses means it does not include the, next, the number next to it. Let's look at the standard comparison or the inequalities. Less than or equal to, greater than or equal to means includes. This is just less than or greater than. Does not include the number next to it. Equal obviously means equal. Not equal to means it doesn't include the number. So like we said, x does not equal 0 means um, the domain does not include 0. It includes everything else. So with that in mind, let's take a look at another example. Determine the domain of the following function. So here's our function. Notice it has arrows on both the left and the right, and it goes up and to the left, up and to the right. If we scan this line, I mean, can you guys, and can you see that this line is going to touch the graph even right here because the graph is going to keep going? Eventually, these two are going to intersect. In fact, they're going to intersect forever, okay? Even all the way over to the left, even if you keep going, eventually these, this line and this line will cross. And the same is true to the right. Okay, this line will eventually go up and cross with this line no matter how far to the right I, pull, I drag it. So we're starting at negative infinity because that line actually does go on forever. And it's eventually going to cr cross the graph. Okay, so we're going to start with negative infinity. And if we scan, it's going to touch everywhere on the graph. It's never going to not touch. It's always going to touch. Even right here, it'll eventually touch if we drag it up far enough. Those will eventually cross up there. And so it goes from negative infinity to infinity. Remember, put parentheses around the infinities. Or you could just write x equals all real numbers. And that would be the other way of writing it. In case you guys don't know this, you can use this symbol, which represents all real numbers. Let's look at another example to determine the domain of the following function. All right. So we're going to take this line. Scan it from left to right. Now notice, again, there is an arrow there on the left. So it's actually going to be touching all the way to the left, so we're going to still start at negative infinity. Touching, 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 touching. It does not touch right there, because that red dotted line represents an asymptote, which means the graph will not touch there at negative 1. So when we go to write the domain, we're going to start at negative infinity, and go all the way, parentheses, to negative 1. And we're going to put a parenthesis at negative 1 because it does not touch at negative 1. Okay? The blue line, which is our vertical scan line, does not touch the pink line. In this case, that's our graph. It touches the asymptote, but the asymptote is where the pink line does not touch. So we're going to put a parenthesis at negative 1. Once we start scanning after negative 1, it's going to start touching that pink line again. So. In order to notate that, we're going to start at negative 1 and put a parenthesis. And that line is going to touch all the way. Uh, let's not move the asymptote. Let's move the actual scan line. So it's going to touch all the way until we get to 1. So I'm going to touch the graph, touch the, the pink graph down here. All the way until we get to 1, it will not touch again. So we're going to put a parenthesis around 1. Okay, then after 1, it's going to start touching again. And it's going to touch the graph all the way to infinity because this arrow goes on forever. So we're going to write comma parenthesis. Uh, sorry, comma. Wrong. Whoops. Wrong example. We're going to write comma infinity. Because so that means it goes from one to infinity. And again, we can look at the graph and see. It doesn't touch at one, but it goes all the way to infinity. So wait, one, one comma infinity. Again, the other way to write that is it doesn't touch at negative 1, and it doesn't touch at 1, but it touches everywhere else. This, by the way, means and in logic. So if it doesn't touch at negative 1, it doesn't touch at 1, we can also just write that. And that will also, in an equality format, tell us what the domain is. Let's look at the next graph. So notice a couple things about this graph. Um, there is an actual point down here. 
and then we have what's called ray so it goes from there all the way and can probably can't see the arrow there but let's draw one real quick that goes on forever so let's figure out the domain we're going to start with this scan line and we're going to start from the left and scan to the right it's not touching not touching not touching so if it's not touching on the left we're obviously not going to write negative infinity because it's not touching at all we're not going to write anything until it starts touching which is at negative six now since it is including since it is touching at negative six we're going to put brackets around it because it's actually touching remember brackets means includes the number parentheses means it does not include okay and then of course it doesn't touch before that so there's no need to put negative infinity now afterwards it's not touching not touching not touching not touching not touching we're only actually going to write something again at 2 because that's when it starts touching it again and notice it does touch at 2 so at 2 we're going to put a bracket and then we're going to scan the line and it's going to touch forever because of that arrow so we're going to write comma infinity and again you always put parentheses around infinity the other way of writing this is to say that it touches at x equals negative 6 which is right here okay and it also touches whenever x is greater than or equal to 2 which would be it starting at 2 and going forever that line will touch okay so x is greater than or equal to 2 the line will touch the graph and so you can write that in interval notation x is greater than or equal to 2 so either this way or this way will work for the domain final example this one's a little tricky okay so we're going to start the line to the left okay and then we're going to scan it from left to right we're going to see where the what the x values are that crosses so starting at negative infinity it will cross because of that arrow right there okay so it's going to touch at negative infinity scan all the way up until negative two no we don't stop right we don't stop because it's still touching right here so we're going to keep scanning keep scanning keep scanning keep scanning even here it's touching right here scan 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 now it does stop at one but it does touch one okay so just to recap what we did it starts at negative infinity it doesn't stop touching until after one but it still touches at one so for that we're going to write negative infinity all the way to positive one we're going to put a bracket around one because it touches at one so it's touching there so we're going to put a bracket around one again you always put you, you always put parentheses around negative infinity okay so let's keep scanning now it doesn't touch again until two but it does touch at two see it's a solid point up there so we're going to put a bracket around two and if we keep scanning it's going to touch forever all the way to infinity and that's because of that arrow so we're going to write 2 comma infinity and parentheses around that the other way to represent this is to say x is less than or equal to 1 because anything less than 1 so, or equal to it will touch okay it will touch no matter what so you can write x is less than or equal to 1 you could also write you know if I want to write it down here you could write 1 is greater than or equal to x right that's the same thing, but um, we didn't want to put x first, so we can write it that way. Other one, and this by the main means or, okay. So the domain is either this or this, um, or x is greater than or equal to two, and so here we have two. Anything equal to or greater than two, x is going to be equal to, so we can write x is greater than or equal to two. So that's domain in a nutshell. Just take your vertical line and see for which x values that line crosses the graph. If you have any other questions, let me know.